cheese and bread. I know, like, what the hell? Welcome to our UCLA Extension Department of Business, Management, and Legal Programs video lecture series on entrepreneurship, new venture formation, and strategic business plan development. This video gives instructions on how to develop your phases of competitive development and your phases of competitive development worksheet. I'm Harry Redinger, your instructor. There is a total of over 40 videos in uh, this video lecture series that integrate with our UCLA Extension online course management program, Canvas. Each video strives to be brief and will have a little bit of overlap to tie our curriculum together. Okay, let's get started. So we, we want to start this video off with an introduction to what, what are our phases of competitive development, just simply stated, a definition of it. Because we're going to find that our phase of competitive development integrate into half the sections in our business plan in some way or another. But just to get things started, uh, our phase of competitive development are the instructions, the steps, if you will, uh, as to how we're going to execute our mission statement to achieve our vision of success statement, or should we say, how we're going to execute our mission statement to build the infrastructure of the organization and thus achieve our vision of success statement. So as we recall, businesses that develop and implement a business plan earn 10 times more in profit uh, and uh, that firms of the same market size and market niche that don't. A good mindset to have when developing and assembling your phase of competitive development is that of uh, an orchestra, orchestra conductor uh, conducting all of the different uh, divisions of an orchestra. The string section, the wind section, the wood section, the drum section, the percussion section, etc. Just like a CEO, a CEO has to conduct all the functional divisions of labor within an organization. The marketing department, administrative operations, research and development, uh, manufacturing or project management, accounting, bookkeeping, human resource management, etc. And everyone has to march to the same corporate culture beat theme of, of the organization. So to have the mindset of, of a conductor, an orchestra conductor, is a good mindset to have because our phases of competitive development are universal. Everyone in the organization has to understand what's going on. It can't be unique just to the accounting department or the human resource management department. Though, each department might have their own, shall we say, uh, interpretation of uh, uh, department description, job titles, etc., that support the mission statement that are being done in sync with the phases of competitive development that, uh, per that phase. And we're going to talk about how to coordinate that with our phase of competitive development worksheet. Okay, our, our next slide here makes the statement, success is not an accident. Success is actually a choice. And I think we can almost rephrase that to say, success is absolutely a choice. You've got to demand it. You've got to want it. You know, if you're not looking for it, if you're not thirsty for it, it could come right by underneath your nose and you might not even notice it. So we have to have, again, the mindset that, that our vision of success is something that we need and want to develop a methodical strategy to achieve. You know, this makes me stop and think for a second here of the definition of economics, uh, which is the study of scarcity. 
So there's no organization, not even you know General Motors, that has unlimited resources to do what you know to, to put into marketing. They have to they have to balance the distribution of the resources to all the functional divisions of the organization to manage and grow the company and, and or survive the ups and downs, the ebb and flow of the economy. And so all businesses have to have some kind of strategy, which is step one, two, three phases of competitive to develop. Now, little sidebar here, when we get into our competitive strategy sections of the business plan, we're going to learn about six different strategies and phase of competitive development is one of them. However, we're giving an introduction to phase of competitive development now because we have to understand how to develop them for the strategic planning process uh, to thus uh, be prepare to develop uh, uh, our, our, uh, our phase of competitive worksheet, which is essential to, to have in order to develop our uh, mechanical section of the business plan. We'll talk more about that when we get there. But anyway, this slide here, the importance of it is that when we get into developing the phase of competitive development, it's actually a mindset that we of how we're going to utilize our scarce resources to achieve our vision of success. So here's our, I want to give a couple sneak previews so you can understand the importance of our phase of competitive development worksheet or our phase of competitive development. Because if you're not aware of that going into it, you won't, uh, or shall I better say, the more you understand how you're going to apply your phase of competitive development to different parts of the business plan, you'll be a little bit more on target on how to develop these phases so that at no time they sound like they're specializing in just one department or just marketing or just financial management, etc. So here we can see at the top we have our organizational structure, which means divisions of labor, clear, clear clean divisions of labor, like, like organs within the human body, the heart, the lungs, the kidneys, Kidneys, etc. If one goes down, they all go down. So we, we have across the top our functional divisions of labor that we as entrepreneurs have to develop and bring life to all these in order to get the business off the ground. And then we can look at the, the, the left hand side here where we have our phases of competitive development. So this makes like a, a matrix management grid. So where our phases of competitive development cross and a functional division of labor, that box is where we're going to put job titles, job descriptions, funding needs, things like that, to, as a, like a construction schedule. We have to complete the tasks in each one of these boxes uh, horizontally across as we proceed down in the execution of our phase of competitive development. And one of the beauties of developing a phase as a competitive development worksheet, when you your mind goes through, rehearses in a way, the whole process from start to finish of developing each department phase by phase by phase, department by, by department by, by department, you really start to know your business like the back of your hand. It's just, um, it's, uh, it's uh, and, and, and we're going to talk about uh, uh, demanding success. Just like an athlete trains to do something over and over and over again, this strategy, if you will, okay, these phase of competitive development relevant to your organizational structure is, is a, just like a basketball play or a football play. The more you rehearse it, the more you're prepared for it. Now, in the process of executing, can things change? Heck yes. Uh, but, but now you've got kind of a, a starting model, a paradigm to work with. Okay, so um, this next slide just emphasizes the, the, how the phase of competitive development integrate into our phase of competitive development worksheet. I, I, the sli slide I have here now just shows, that here's, the, I, in using just little, like bullet word phrases, uh, how we've put bullet words like, for instance, administration, um, lease, lease, off, um, uh, lease office, buy computer, set up files, set up uh, phones, uh, order um, letterhead and things of that sort. Marketing, order brochures, set up database, uh, design ads, um, uh, uh, 
pr uh, presentation development, <laughs> um, et cetera, production, uh, purchase uh, equipment, things of that sort. And so as we, um, uh, uh, we, so we use the phase of competitive development worksheet to, to outline, in essence, the objective of each department for each phase. And, and it's just kind of critical and more because when we start to get to um, developing our funding needs and things of th that sort, this gets our mind uh, aware of all the little detail-y things that we have to buy to, uh, to kickstart the company in terms of being able to estimate how much, in fact, regarding estimating, let's get our next slide up here, how much money has to come out for each phase for each department to have an un understanding of how much money has to go out before revenue starts to come back and, and achieving our, our break-even point. So our phase of competitive development worksheet is instrumental in outlining uh, financial requirements, uh, scope of work for department descriptions and things of this sort. Um, now here's another application just to kind of drive home the importance of our phase of competitive development worksheet. The, uh, the, like the fourth step in developing a business plan or setting up a business is developing what I often refer to as the mechanical sections or the uh, procedure manual, operations manual for the organization. And here's where we're going to take and outline uh, a, de a, a department description, job titles, uh, 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 job descriptions uh, uh, for each of the functional divisions of labor or each department in the organization. For each mechanical section or for each department and these are in these mechanical sections are like mini business plans unique just to that department and as we can see here um, there there are four sections four four things that we have to develop for each department within the organization one and a department description two an organizational, a department organizational structure, three, job titles, job descriptions, and four, phases of competitive development descriptions for each of the departments. The title of the phases of competitive development for each department in the organization are is established with the phases of competitive development uh, established in the phase of competitive development section. So what we develop here in terms of the titles for phase one, two, three, four, five, etc., are going to be repeated verbatim for each of the mechanical sections. So that's, so it's important to understand this and, and the reason why we want to keep things clean and simple that it, for each phase that we develop in our strategy to execute the mission statement to build the infrastructure to achieve the vision of success statement is going to re repeat itself in every mechanical section or for every division of labor within the organization. And it's real important for you to understand that now as we stand on the threshold of going into developing our phase of competitive development. Um, this slide here shows up in many of these lectures, and it's truly my favorite slide in terms of a picture says a thousand words. So, you know, again, just to bring you up to speed and a reminder, so we have historically the, the biography of your life or the history of the organization and the significant points of, of uh, the historical development of you or your business. And the line that cuts through that is our mission statement. What are we selling? To whom we're selling? What makes us competitively different? And our mission statement wants to be a projection of the essence of who we are, our, our, our life force alignment, if you will. And when we cross time now, we're now going into the future. And, and so our, our, the phases of our life 
want to almost seamlessly align with our phases of competitive development. So as we go through, it should just makes logical sense that the phases that we've gone through in our life seamlessly segue into the phases of, um, of, of, our, of our business, or if it's a life plan, of our, of our life plan. And this exponential curve that's on the bottom is our phases of competitive development. Because if we do our phase of competitive development correctly, and, and if we go back to the mission statement video and the purpose of a mission statement, it, what we're selling, to whom we're selling, what makes us competitively different, is to establish consistency. Consistency in the execution of our mission statement. And we know, statistically speaking, that if we're consistent in executing our mission statement for approximately a two and a half year period, we'll experience the magic of business, which we call an exponential growth, growth curve. So our phase of competitive development is, is often depicted as an exponential growth curve. We're two and a half years into the development of inf infrastructure, just shoots up, skyrockets right up in, in, and achieves our vision of success statement, which by the way, we like to achieve within three to five years because that's when most investors want to have an exit plan. They want to see and or you want to know what, uh, which is our the achievement of our vision of success, uh, which deals with the size of the business in this particular case. Um, what's the payoff? What's coming in? And we usually, if we do everything right, achieve that really quickly. Okay, um, the next slide up here is just a reminder, a little, some fun statements. So the, there's, there's two old sayings here. Um, Rome wasn't built in a day, and you can't eat an elephant with one bite. So we need to break things down into lots of little itty bitty steps and itty bitty bites. <laughs> We can achieve anything, anything, if we have a plan that, you know, step by step acquires the education or the resources. If we put our mind into anything we want to achieve, utilizing this phase of competitive development concept, we can literally achieve anything if we want it bad enough, if, if we want to, uh, if we're passionate about it. If, if, if we make that vision of success our, our destiny in life, and, and if, when we see something that is truly our destiny, that our whole life is all about achieving it, now we can start making all the little itty bitty steps, the baby steps that turn into a walk, that turn into a stride, that turn into a sprint, sprint meaning the exponential growth curve part, to achieve it. So Rome wasn't built in a day, it took time over hundreds of years, as well as we can't eat an elephant with one bite. So we have to logically go into it. What step steps can we take per the resources we have at any given time in this uh, in these phases of competitive development? There is much in common with the process of building a building and the process of building a business. Um, uh, and so, buildings ha are constructed w within a very precise mechanical and administrative set of processes and systems. There's building departments, there's financing, there's just a lot going on. And logically, duh, there's got to be a foundation before a frame, a frame before a roof, a, a roof before... <laughs> you know, mechanical systems and insulation and, 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 and stucco and drywall and all that stuff can come in. And, and this is another mindset that we want to have going into this process is just dumb logic, dumb logic. What are we going to do first, second, third? And I, I often jokingly say, you know, if you go camping, you know, don't forget the matches and the toilet paper. So as you develop phase of competitive development, you know, you don't want to leave something out that's just really essential in terms of making it all happen. And I've got some real life stories that I'm going to tell in, a, in, in just a bit in terms of, you know, uh, not really realizing what you're getting into in terms of phases of development. And then you bump into it and realize, boy, did I make some big mistakes. So just let's keep in mind that it's a very mechanical process. And 
experience is everything. I mean, and, and, and so often people go in to start businesses and industries with no experience, and I'm gonna tell a personal story here in just a minute, that you know, you're gonna learn the hard way. And don't give up just because it failed the first time, but, but you know, th this is where a lot much experience comes in to actually know what you're supposed to do for a second, third. And if you haven't been through it before, the, there's just a very high probability you're gonna discover that you did something wrong or, or had the wrong sequence of, of, of um, activities to, to achieve your objective. So here's our, our little, our, our cannon man here again. But just kind of, okay, so um, your phases of competitive development want to reflect a rock solid logical process. So, and, and so anyone who looks at these phases should go, oh, that makes perfect sense. I can see two plus two equals four. I can see the logic behind what you're going to do, when you're gonna do it, and why you're going to do it. And by the way, everybody, this is where forming an advisory board is really, really helpful to have other people critique this. So we, you know, early I say that you know you have to go through the business plan development process three times in order to you know clean out you know all the potential errors in it, and and so the the our first clip is to come is to make our best effort uh, in. Uh, establishing a logical sequence of events to execute the mission statement to thus achieve the vision of success statement. And this sequence wants to be just a rock solid application of, of logic. You know, here's uh, another important point, and just so just always remember, and this is a part of this key thing, businesses that develop and implement a business plan earn 10 times more in profit than firms that don't for four basic reasons. And I bring this up in all of our videos and in the classroom. One, there's a mission statement. That's the, you know, the basis, the foundation of everything. Two, there's a vision of success statement. We have some kind of idea where we're going. Three, there is organizational structure, division of labor leads us specialization leads to increased output. And four, at the bottom here, there's phase of development, phases of competitive development. What are we going to do first, second, third to build the infrastructure to achieve the vision of success statement? So what we're doing here is one of those, one of the critical components of success um, of, of the entire entrepreneurship, new venture formation, strategic business plan development process. Um, and then just as another reminder that it's the ultimate objective. So the, the, pri the first objective, what is our mission statement? Second objective, what's our vision of success? Third, what is our organizational structure? And four, what are the phase of competitive development? So in this step one, two, three kind of strategy in developing a business, this is the ultimate objective. And this is where we really have to sharpen the pencil and really, you know, Put the you know the the brain work into given our minimum scarce resources how are we going to make this dream come true how what what are the baby steps uh, how, what what is crawling what is what is walking what is skipping what is running <coughs> what's a sprint how do we define these phases what are we going to do because we can achieve anything anything as long as we, if we put our mind together and, and acquire the right brain resources to make this thing happen. Okay, so we're gonna get into um, a case study application right now of, of, uh, of our phase of competitive development. I'm, um, over the years I've been a serial entrepreneur, you might say in the sense that of businesses that I've tried to get off the ground and I put uh, three years of my life in trying to get a business off the ground called Veggie Pack. And let me talk, I'm going to spend a little bit of time just to introduce you to it and then I'm going to go over the phase of competitive development for the organization, also explaining what went wrong so you can all learn from this a little bit. So, uh, Veggie Pack is a business that um, uh, its mission statement was to develop and produce custom blended chopped vegetables uh, to the to the public through uh, retail storefront kitchens. 
No place anywhere in America exists storefront kitchens uh, or restaurants, but storefront kitchens where you can, you know, put an order and pick it up that will develop a custom blend of, of vegetables. If you want 18 different vegetables in there, they got hopper bins or they can make it up of, of 18 uh, vegetables or we, but, it, but I'll explain what happened in a minute. Uh, make it up, but uh, and then blend it up and put it in containers, and you can pick it up and 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 pay a, a price per pound for these vegetables. And um, and I I you know I do when I whenever you come across something uh, that no one's doing, and then given the health crisis in America, in America we're the sickest people in the world. We have the highest rates of heart disease, coronary disease, cancer high blood pressure, um, uh, diabetes, et cetera. And all of which are directly related to our diet, uh, what, we're, we're, what we eat. And, and so part of this business was to promote a plant-based diet, sometimes referred to as a vegan diet, but a plant-based diet. And, um, and so uh, as I started to put all the parts together, uh, at some point I'm gonna share with my phases of competitive development, where things where I discovered some things, and, but that's the essence of the business was a business that developed uh, custom blended chopped vegetables per whatever you want, um, uh, and and the consu the target consumer was somebody for help that that wanted to make a paradigm shift in their eating habits to correct. Um, uh, uh, health, health conditions, etc. Okay, so um, the first slide here is um, our phase one, and I'm going to go through. Geez, wish I think there's about 15 phases of development here. But in this case, phase one uh, was the development of a prototype veggie pack kitchen, kitchen to shoot videos, and I, I developed and made, I manufactured, because one of my hobbies is woodworking, and I've got a, a full wood shop, and I, so I built this uh, veggie pack um, workstation where you could chop the vegetables and then put them in this big, huge, you know, mixing bowl and then mix them up. And then to the right of this, <clears throat> you know, workstation up here, I had a table that you could open a lid to and, and place pl <clears throat> plastic containers in, and then you could close the lid so all the vegetables went straight in the container, not off to the side. And, and then you would take the vegetables out of the, the mixing bowl and then scatter them over this, this uh, packing table and then uh, tamp them into the container, then lift, lift the, um, the, the lid to the table and then place the packaging lids on, on the packages and then put the label on. And it worked really, really well. It was really, really slick. Um, and uh, what I didn't dis didn't know at the time, and 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 I'll show where I kind of how far I got through this. And I I brought here. Um, there's I have a knife. And and when you develop anything that's going to become you be used in a commercial kitchen, it's got to have this NSF stamp on it, which stands for National Science Foundation which was developed by the Department of um, Health Services at the University of Michigan back in 1944. Anything you use in a commercial kitchen has to be one, stainless steel, and two, it's got to have the stamp on it. Everything I built here, and I put in a huge amount of time into the design of this table, um, was all wood. There's no way it would ever be approved in a, a commercial kitchen. And then on top of that, in order to get this NSF stamp on this equipment, you know, that's like getting an underwriter's laboratory seal on it. Just It's just thousands of dollars of, applic of, of application fees and uh, things of this sort in order to get, make that happen. So at the very beginning of this process, I, I don't want to say I was doomed, but I had no idea that all the work I put into it was soon to be turned, you know, um, to be, I don't want to say a waste of time because I, you still have to go through the process, but I had no idea. And, and, so, and so you know, 90% of, of uh, startup businesses 
that have a patent type of idea. I was going to get this patented and trademarked and all that kind of stuff because it was going to be kind of the symbol of these veggie pack stores in terms of w uh, workstations that employees would work at. 90% um, of businesses uh, have no experience in the industry they're starting their business in. And thus, and therefore, 90% uh, of patent applications get denied. And, and I, you know, embarrassed, chagrined to say I'm, I'm, I'm an example of that. But this is how you learn. So the next phase, or phase two, was business plan development. And so once I, I built all this stuff, I then put together actually over three different versions of a business plan until I really dialed it in on how this could develop uh, from a startup to a regional to uh, a state uh, to a national level distributed through franchises and wholly owned, wholly owned veggie pack type stores. And again, since I teach business plan development, you know, this, this was like, I don't know, she's a 60 page business plan, just tons of information and detail in it. Um, phase three was the production of video clips. So I developed and shot over 40 cooking video clips, uh, introduction of veggie pack and uh, video clips, investment video clips. I put just a whole lot of time in de de designing, choreographing, and shooting vi vi video clips for this business because they all were going to be used in the website. And so phase four is website development. And again, a huge amount of time went into developing a very robust, very animated uh, website, uh, veggiepack.com. It's not live now. I still have the, the URL uh, address on it, but just a huge amount of work went into the integrating the, the pictures, the graphics, the, um, uh, the video clips uh, into this. Um, phase five is business administration setup. Um, so I set up a quick and QuickBooks accounts and files. I had special meetings with uh, an accountant. I files. Uh, uh, I start applying for. Um, I became a corporation. I incorporated. Which, God's sakes, you know, you can incorporate with pay, you know fifteen dollars and less than a half a day of work, and the amount of time it takes to turn a corporation off once you've turned it on is hundreds of dollars and in several weeks of work and you're no doubt will have to hire an attorney and have to hire a CPA to make sure everything's done so you don't have the IRS chasing you and or the Secretary of State chasing you down for franchise tax fees and things of that sort. So before you incorporate, make sure you've got something that's going to fly. Again, that's, you know, I, all, I had tons of enthusiasm and rushed into it, and me of all people who teach this the subject matter should have known better. But anyway, I did all of the administrative setup, plus um, I became a certified uh, food protection manager, which is a federal type certification in order to uh, produce food for the sell to the public. And then phase six, uh, I opened up an account with a commercial kitchen uh, called Chef Center of California. Really great organization. I uh, nothing but but positive uh, things to say about this organization. Uh, located um, in Pasadena, California, and uh, and here is where I you know became aware of the health department requirements to. Um, that everything had to be in stainless steel. I couldn't use any of the stuff I built, and this is just where it was a real wake-up call. But anyway, uh, I went through uh, the process of, of buying vegetables and making my first production run. Also, there's something I discovered, too, is I got a resale number, and when you go to buy vegetables from a retail food supplier, vegetable food supplier, they don't sell things by the pound. They sell things by the case. And the whole concept of this business was based on uh, maintaining a supply of 18 different vegetables. And to buy vegetables via a wholesaler uh, by the case in the appropriate amounts for proportioning to make the garden variety blend, you know, chopped vegetables, I'd have to buy 545 pounds of vegetables. And when you, when you are producing 
uh, a product that has an expiration date, you have to move those vegetables within woo, one to two days or all of a sudden it's, it's becoming an outdated product. And so um, that was one of the other barriers of entry and we're gonna, uh, that uh, I was just really not aware of. So the first batch of vegetables I bought at a grocery store. But if this business started to grow, there would be this intermediate zone where I have to go to three or four vet, uh, grocery stores to get all the vegetables I needed. And, and there's no way I could buy 500 and some odd pounds of vegetables and, and not be able to move it. I'd be throwing the stuff in the trash at some point. So that was another thing I didn't, re another aspect of this business I didn't realize until I got into it. So this is the type of business that once you get started, there's got to be a marketing program in place that can create enough demand which means this all would have to emanate through uh, a, a commercial location that you set up. I couldn't be doing this really through a um, hourly use commercial kitchen. Anyway, this is where I stopped. This is where I realized, you know, the amount of work that I'd have to put in, the volume I'd have to put in to be anywhere close to a break-even point. And at this at this point, I was about two and a half years into it, and, and it just thousands of dollars. I mean, more. I want to just make tests, make five, seven thousand dollars of fees, equipment, and things that I purchased and developed over time. And I just was running out of gas. And so this is one of the reasons why, you know, something like eighty percent of businesses fail within the first two and a half years of, of initiating the process. And I firsthand experienced it. I just I just hit bottom. I ran out of out of gas and 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 so this is why it's important to really understand your phase of competitive development, but also know that you can really bank on uh, it, it working all the way through to the completion of it. So at no time you have a very unfortunate discovery of something you forgot. So, um, so if I go, anyway, if we kept forward, phase seven would have consisted of uh, the local market development with door hangers and social media, uh, but mainly door, ha uh, door hangers, friends and family, just to, just to get a start, get the thing going. And, uh, and this is working through, basically we'd be producing the product as a catering service, which was another thing I realized most people don't want to buy their vegetables from a caterer. They'd much rather go to the store so they can see and look, is it, is it crisp and things of that sort. Phase eight uh, is the uh, is Los Angeles market uh, venture funding operations. So, so the plan here is once we prove that the product sells and we had a you know startup customers, and that we're ready to you know start developing a retail store, is to raise about two point five million dollars of venture funding to get this thing from you know being in a, a, a hourly you know by the hour use commercial kitchen to developing our own kitchen and that brings us to phase nine uh, the construction of veggie packs first commercial location and reality is this product would have to start at some kind of venture location and uh, for its get up so if I did the strategy again I wouldn't I would not have. Uh, I wouldn't have. I've, I wouldn't have done a catering type service application. I would have. I would have put together a advisory board and and amass the two or three million dollars up front to develop a commercial location and start it from the get go from a commercial location, uh, a retail storefront location. So anyway, phase nine is the construction of this location. Uh, phase ten. Uh, is expansion into the greater market, the greater Los Angeles uh, market area, and and part of this is just learning how to uh, 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 developing a market development team, or shall we say, a real estate development team, a construction management team, an HR team uh, to that could come into an area that had some 150,000 uh, residences on. Uh, on average, that was I think the, the number I was kind of working with. So for every 150,000 people uh, an area to, ha to have a, a market boundary kind of application. And I think that was approximately 120 locations for the greater Los Angeles market. 
Um, phase 11 is franchise operations set up and funding. So now that we've got all these locations set up, now we're ready to start expanding into other regions. And uh, phase 12 is the, um, uh, the process of developing franchise kits. Uh, promotional material and then uh, to send that out to advocacy type organizations that deal with health and wellness, cancer prevention, obesity prevention, uh, departments of uh, health, uh, uh, education and welfare, um, Red Cross, uh, medical associations, because a chopped vegetable diet is kind of a panacea solution for a very wide range of chronic disease type issues. So our plan was to send out franchise type packages looking for potential investors to start up uh, veggie pack type operations in um, uh, major, there, as you'll see by our next, I'll jump to that now. Uh, phase 13 um, is to actually start the process of setting up veggie pack administrative systems and operations, regional systems and, and um, uh, operations. And uh, there are 285 metropolitan areas in the entire United States. So we have 50 states, but if you take a look at um, population hubs like Los Angeles, Orange County, Long Beach, or, or uh, uh, within just one Meganopolis type area, like within the greater Los Angeles area, there's probably six or seven hubs, if you will, in terms of defined metropolitan areas. And so our goal now is to target this, uh, t these 285 uh, major metropolitan hubs and then get a retail veggie pack store um, developed there. You know, in the business plan, I had uh, little kids dressed in, you know, um, vegetable costumes out front of these things dancing. I mean, there's there just a lot of really exciting things, and, and who knows, this still might, might happen someday. But anyway, phase 13 is um, uh, the acquisition of a corporate offices. And I think I, I set this up for uh, in San Luis Obispo or some kind of idealistic place like that. And then uh, the next phase is of phase 14, uh, national market penetration and market share acquisition. So this company, would, its goal was to be on the forefront of just basic, you know, health and wellness development on a national level, which is a, a, one of the fastest growing industries within the the greater U, uh, United States. And that's why I have a, a Lear jet there in terms of um, you know flying around to all these states to check up on uh, their progress. So, so I had some fun developing the vision board images for each of those. So uh, that is a kind of long-winded introduction to a set of phases of competitive development for of the execution of the mission statement to achieve the vision of success statement. I now want to play a little video for you and this video is um, uh, it's on a movie called The Dirty Dozen. It's a World War II video and I think it, it aired back in the 70s or something like that. And they, um, er, uh, the, the, so you have an understanding of what's going on. Uh, the, the GIs, okay, the army people in this were all on, uh, on death row in, in the army. They were all, they committed some kind of crime and they were all going to be, you know, hung. And, uh, and the military decided, we're going to, instead of just killing you, <laughs> hanging you, we're going to send you on a suicide mission uh, to break into a, um, uh, to sneak into a, uh, a, a residence, a castle, um, in Germany or Austria, wherever it was, I, I don't know the location, and uh, and they were going to attack and you know machine gun down um, German officers. And the reason why I'm sharing this is this clip is from the uh, a planning meeting they had the night before uh, they were going to execute this mission, and they broke the whole mission down into steps. And all the people of these, this dirty dozen group 
had memorized these steps and they sung it as a song. And so, you know, just like the, the commanding officer here is like the, the conductor, they all got this into a, a song that they all sung and they all played different roles in this um, mission. It's also an important note, and if you listen to the commanding officer, at one point, he says, you know, things change, things could go wrong, but at least this is a, a start. And if we have a, a plan in place, and we've memorized it just like they have, uh, if something goes wrong, at least we, can, we understand the overall theme. We know we can improvise and make a change, and we all can kind of like, it makes sense. If we can't do this, then we'll shift over here and still achieve the objective. Okay, so um, let's watch this video. Turn the volume up. Hey, Major! <laughs> what do you think about that one, Major? Huh? Look, I didn't want to tell you guys this before because I thought it might make you nervous. Because after our last little party, the generals were all in favor of sending you guys back to finish your sentences. Or get hung. Or right. get hung. Or get hung. But I made a deal with them. Knocking off Breed's headquarters is what got you guys off the hook. Hey! You weren't really worried one way or another, though, were you, Major? No, not much you wasn't. <laughs> but we still have one operation to go. If you guys foul up on this one, none of us will ever play the violin again. Because up until now, it's all been a game. But as of tomorrow night, it's going to be the real thing. And if you want to know how real, I'll tell you. It's my guess that a lot of you guys won't be coming back. But there's no sense of squawking about that, right? Because the Army never did love you anyway. And besides, you all volunteered, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's more than I did. <laughs> Sergeant Byron? Uh, oh, not the, look, I know we've been over this a thousand times, but there's a lot of things that can go wrong. We've got to be prepared to improvise. So let's see what happens if everything goes right. You ready? All right. One. Down the robot, we've just begun. One. Down the robot, we've just begun. Two. The guards are through. Three. The Major's men are on a spree. Four. Major, what a struggle through the door. Five. Think, Think we save our danger drive. Six. The Major gives the rope a fix. Seven. What a struggle to hook to him. Eight. Major's got a date. Nine. The other guys go up the line. Ten. Sawyer and Gilpin are in the van. Eleven. Oh, he guards points five and seven. Twelve. Waterslaw and the Major go down to Dell. And where is Donald Duck? Donald Duck's down at the crossroads with a machine gun. He better not be asleep or we'll all be in trouble, huh? Thirteen. Frank will go duck without being seen. Fourteen. Zero hour. And mayonnaise cuts the cable. Frank will the throne. Fifteen. Franco goes in where the others have been. Sixteen. We, we all come out like this. I agree. <laughs> and kill every officer in sight. Okay, I, so, so this is an application where you can see a strategy uh, being turned into a, a rhyme. And there's no reason why this can't be the CEO of a corporation uh, getting all senior management and staff on the same wavelength of how the market's going to be developed. And, uh, and I just thought that was a really fun kind of um, application to see that where every, it, it, in, in essence, our strategy really does become a part of our corporate culture. And that's what, I mean, that's the big aha moment that I, I hope you're all kind of, uh, uh, that you have from uh, being introduced to this aspect of entrepreneurship, strategic planning, and new venture formation is that our strategy is, in essence, a aspect of our culture. It's a projection of our culture. Um, the next slide, we're almost done. The next slide up here is just, um, you know, if, uh, if, uh, it, it gives a, a, an application of the most simplest, simplest application of strategy. So if you, for any business, have to come up with just a quickie, you know, strategy, this works. Phase one, business setup. Duh. Okay, we got or or you know new product line setup, but we got to set things up. There's infrastructure and things like that, manufacturing files or whatever. But you know 
setup. Two, market development. Once things are set up, we have to market the new profit center or market the business, but we have to get out in the marketplace and market it. Three, um, growth, market share acquisition, survive the uh, market share acquisition, uh, uh, survive the startup process to the point where we're profitable, we're growing, and, uh, and we can acquire more market share, more territory as we grow. And then finally uh, would be our profitability management. So when we find our optimum size of growth, um, now it's a matter of just, you know, adjusting the, the organization's size with the ebb and flow of the marketplace. So if you have to come up with a quickie strategy, there's your, your four basic phases you can do. You know, business setup, um, uh, marketing and sales, uh, growth, um, profitability management. Um, just as a reminder as we start to wrap everything up, that you know the the fa our phase of competitive development is the end results of our initial strategic planning process, which we've already watched some videos on. We've been talking a lot, uh, much about the whole strategic planning process or case study process to this point. But you know, what's our mission statement? What are we selling? To whom we're selling? What makes us competitively different? That leads to our vision of success. How big do we want to get? That leads to the design of the business. What are the functional divisions of labor in the business? That leads to how are we going to execute this mission statement to build the infrastructure to achieve our vision of success statement and that's our phase of competitive development. Uh, let's also remember um, that uh, here's one of my, my favorite authors and Rick Pitino and, and his book uh, or shall I say one of my favorite books is Success is a Choice which goes over the 10 steps to overachieving in business and life but you know, as I, I mentioned earlier, as an, as an athlete, you know, they develop a strategy. You practice the strategy over and over and over again, just like the Dirty Dozen film clip. They rehearsed their strategy, what they're going to do first, first, second, third, over and over and over again with, with a, uh, a, 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 a poem, a rhythm, a song. You know, if you, if you saw the next clip in that movie, they're on uh, a, uh, a, a B-50, no, I forget what kind of plane there was, in, but they're on a, a uh, a bomber type plane uh, getting ready to jump out with parachutes on and as they're flying to you know their their departure point they're singing in the song with their parachutes and helmets and guns in hand and all that kind of stuff so they kept rehearsing this over and over and over again right up to the start of of their mission but just remember that in order to demand success in your life your business your career We've got to develop some kind of first, second, third mindset strategy uh, because Rome wasn't built in a day and we can't eat an elephant with one bite. We can't just click our fingers and expect it to happen. We have to e execute you know, a strategy that might be two or three years long to actually have the vision of success start to materialize. Um, anyway, uh, that concludes our rather lengthy talk on how to develop phases of competitive development for a life plan, a business plan, or a career plan. See you at our next video.